Albuquerque, New Mexico, the land of enchantment. You see sunlight and sunshine about 300 days out of the year, and then night falls. And that means on a Friday night, it's time for college football prime time. And one of the prime time offenses in the country, Colorado State, brings in better than 500 yards per game of total offense on the road to take on a Mountain West foe whom they've beaten seven times in a row. Colorado State and New Mexico getting set to go on a Friday night. With that, we welcome you to the broadcast booth. Adam Amin, Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath will join us in a moment as well. And as we, we open up our Friday night dossier, we start with the New Mexico Lobos, a team that's been to two straight bowl games for just the second time in program history, but a really rocky performance last week after it looked like they were picking up steam. They thought they had turned a corner. They got a nice road win at Tulsa. They come back, they beat Air Force at home, and then they have a bye week, feeling good about themselves, and they last week go to Fresno and lay an egg, get blown out 38 to nothing. They've had to refocus a Tough physical week of practice. Bounce back, Bob Davies says. They're going to get our best tonight. They're going to need that against a really talented Colorado State team. Colorado State might be the best team in the Mountain West. They're primed in position to maybe win a conference championship if you ask Mike Bobo. And the biggest tool that they have is this offense. Man, it is good. Balance, man. They have balance. You mentioned it over 500 yards per game, right at 200 yards rushing, over 300 yards passing. When you have a quarterback-receiver combo like Stevens and Michael Gallup, it is tough for any defensive coordinator to sleep at night knowing they have to deal with these two. That's right, Dusty. Uh, my, Nick Stevens told me this is the most confident he's ever felt, and a big reason for that is his growing relationship with Michael Gallup. He said it's to the point now where they can read each other's minds, and with just one look, he knows how Gallup will come out of his routes and where he wants the football. And he especially trusts him in one-on-one -on -one situations, saying those 50-50 balls are more like 80-20 because he knows that Gallup will find a way to come down with it. And because of this, the two hold each other to a higher standard. They're motivated by that accountability and don't want to let each other down. A couple of seniors getting set to hit the road in Mountain West Conference play. This is a big-time game, an important one for the Colorado State Rams facing New Mexico. ESPN. Yes, sir. Big-time game. ESPN's in town. Albuquerque, New Mexico, in more ways than one, truly is the center of attention when you get out west. Equidistant between all these big time cities. The geography major sitting at home right now is loving this. Equidistant between Phoenix and Denver, between Salt Lake City and Dallas. Albuquerque, New Mexico, the site for Mike Bobo's team tonight. In a tough road environment. This team's gone to four straight bulls and two bulls in two years under Mike Bobo. Meanwhile, Bob Davey, has taken this team to two consecutive bowl games as well, but sitting at three and three, entering action tonight. Braxton Davis will kick away for Colorado State. New Mexico won the toss and elected to receive. Elijah Lilly and Romel Jordan are back to return. You got a great Saturday of college football ready to go for you. Let's start you off right with a Friday night appetizer. And the triple option offense of New Mexico will start from the 25-yard line. Lamar Jordan, making his 31st career start tonight, has returned the last couple of games after he missed the Tulsa game. Actually left the Boise State game after he suffered a targeting hit from Chase Hatata. Had a really good game against Air Force, but really struggled last week. Up and down season so far for Lamar Jordan. Three-time captain. He's a great leader, has a ton of respect from his teammates, but he has not had the success so far this season that he had last year. On first down, a good run for Tyrone Owens. He'll pick up seven. Let's see if this offensive line, which has been banged up as of late, can make some push for the running game. Yeah, you know, they're going to have some guys in different spots. A big shakeup along the offensive line. Two right tackles route. So Chris Estrella is going to move from left guard to right tackle. And Charlie Grammel is going to step in at left tackle and expect to see not one, not two, but three quarterbacks tonight running this New Mexico triple option. We'll see Tavaka Tuioti and Colton Gerhardt over the course of the night, according to Bob Davey. Each quarterback has their own specific skill set, and they want to utilize all three. 
Owens. And it'll be third down and about two coming up. Josh Watson on the stop. New Mexico told us yesterday, talking with Bob Davey, getting first downs is the biggest key in this game. Colorado State comes in with a high-powered offense. Some of the best defense you can have is to possess the football, grind that clock away as an offense, and the only way New Mexico can do that is picking up first downs like they have right here. Jordan with the late pitch and a first down. Excellent work giving it to a wide receiver, Jay Griffin, who often comes into the backfield to run it. Griffin, great Griffin's going to motion in from the slot position. It's going to be the pitch man for Jordan. Excellent speed on the perimeter. Great job by Lamar Jordan waiting, the patience. And once the defender declares, a nice pitch outside to move the chains. Expect them to use every bit of this play clock tonight, Adam. Snap came at four, and there goes Richard McCorley with a big run. Inside the Colorado State 40-yard line, Rock McCorley with a 22-yarder. Working on the left side, big hole open up by the offensive line. That's Charlie Grammel. That's the center, Blaze Fountain, open up a big hole for Richard McCorley, a big physical running back, 5'11", 221, but he's got good feet and vision. In the open field, he can have some speed. Perfect start to this game for New Mexico, getting some nice runs between the tackles, something they felt was key against this Ram defense. Here goes Owens. Picks up about four, running into Ellison Hubbard. So already over 40 yards rushing on this opening drive for this triple option offense. They had just 109 in the shutout loss against Fresno State last week. It was the fewest rushing yards for New Mexico since Bob Davies' first year in 2012 when they got shut out by Texas Tech and ran for only 84. And remember, a lot of these pieces are in place from last year. They led the country in rushing at over 350 yards a game. McCorley. Brought down by Max McDonald. Another third down and short situation coming up here for a struggling third down team this season. But they're in third and more manageable, Adam. Last week, they struggled so much with third down against Nevada because they were in third and eight, third and seven. And for an offense that doesn't pass the football well, that's too much. When you're in a situation like third and three, as they run their triple option, this is perfect, perfect down and distance to pick up a first down. Expect a triple option here. They try to work with Daryl Chestnut. And he's still a couple of yards shy as Josh Watson, the plugger in the middle of that linebacking core, makes the stop. Let's see if the offense stays out there on this opening series, chewing up nearly five minutes. It's a nice tackle in the open field by Josh Watson. Slips the block, makes an excellent, excellent tackle in the open field. 6'2", 240. This is a playmaker and linebacker for Colorado State. Again, they break the huddle around 15 on the play clock. Jordan with the pitch, and it is good for a first down for Daryl Chestnut. At least the initial signal was good for a first down. Really nice block on the perimeter. See the tight end take out the edge player and do an, a nice job allowing Chestnut the opportunity to get the edge. But it looks like they're going to mark him short. One of the line judges came out and seemingly had them pass the line to gain. They needed the 29. Bob Davey is still claiming that that ball should be re-spotted perhaps. 
tell you what. From here, it sure looked like he had the first down. Tough angle to tell 100%. Maybe here we get a better look at it. For Daryl Chestnut, for Daryl Chestnut, though, he's got to stretch that football yeah, over I'll the line of the game. That. I mean, it, that's a first down New Mexico should have had. And this will be a dead play as Garrett Hughes got into the offensive backfield early. Offside. Defense, number 95, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty. It's first down. Well, this has got to be a frustrating two-play sequence for Bob Davey. First, his running back doesn't put the effort in, really, to get that first down. Play before. Chestnuts going out of bounds. Right at the sticks. He's got to reach that ball over. I'll tell you what, the New Mexico defensive line had better start watching the football. Back-to-back -back offsides to start the defensive drive. This time, Cody Baker. Offside. Defense, number 53. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. This is a terrible defensive start for Bob Davey. And I would, would think that if he were up here right now, he would say the same thing. So now Nick Stevens gets 10 free yards coming off a fantastic game last week where he threw three touchdowns to Michael Gallup. And he's looking for Gallup. And he just overthrew him. D'Angelo Ross, he drew the coverage on the first opportunity. Man, that's a pass Nick Stevens wishes he had back. Michael Gallup had two steps on the defender. Would have been an easy walk-in touchdown. Speaking of Michael Gallup, leads all the FBS in receiving yards. This guy's got everything in his arsenal. Route runner catches the ball, great competitor, very graceful as he goes up in the air. And how about the offensive line? Opening up holes and only allowed two sacks throughout this season. They haven't allowed a sack since September the 1st against Colorado. Dalen Dawkins works to the 43-yard line. Third down coming up. What a trio. Stevens, redshirt senior quarterback. Dawkins, redshirt senior running back. Gallup, senior receiver. Expecting Kevin Cosgrove to bring pressure here, a staple of this New Mexico defense. Gallup with Ross in coverage gets beat at midfield for a first down. Now you see Bob Davey talking with the head linesman saying, hey, yeah. Gallup bo bobbled that ball, juggled that ball. That should not be a completion now. New Mexico not happy about the call. Michael Gallup just an out route. Very efficient route runner. Can't see from that angle. Oh, that ball comes out. That's an incomplete that's pass. It's got to be reviewed. He, he never has it. No. And they get the play off, and Dawkins ends up slipping down at the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, man. There's already been two calls that I think at least deserve another look in the booth. I'm with you. Michael Gallup, as great as he is, he didn't complete the process of that catch on the sidelines. That should have been fourth down. Even going back, if you take a look at that spot on the opening New Mexico series, perhaps he was short, perhaps he was not. That's a borderline call. That Gallup play, that should probably have been reviewed and overturned. There goes Dawkins. Down to the 42 of New Mexico. Very balanced football team. They can spread you out, getting shotgun. The veteran savvy quarterback Nick Stevens can throw it around the yard and getting big people in the I formation and run lead zone right down your throat as you saw on the previous play. Dalen Dawkins, a violent runner, with explosive speed. They've got their bruising back in there here with Izzy Matthews on third and short. First down for Matthews, down to the 35-yard line. That's 220 pounds pounding for the first down. He's the more physical running back of the two, just a bigger presence at six foot, 220 pounds. Colorado State's had a lot of success on their opening drives here in the past five weeks. Second in the Mountain West in scoring behind Air Force. 
who is in action against Nevada tonight. Play action. Looking for Gallup, and that was well overthrown. This time it was Elijah Lilly who had the coverage on Gallup. Nick Stevens, twice now, he's overthrown Michael Gallup down the football field. As we watched him on tape throughout the week, I was showing you guys yesterday, yep. Nick Stevens has been very efficient, very accurate with the football. He doesn't have a huge arm, but throws a very catchable ball so far here tonight. Got a little bit too much behind it. Maybe the wind at his back. <laughs> Having to put too much air on the ball. Dawkins, good penetration by Jake Rothschiller, the nickelback. Third down and long coming up here for Colorado State's offense. They've already converted twice on third down. Play man-to-man -man coverage out here on Michael Gallup. You're going to give him a little safety help over the top. Michael Gallup down here on the near side of your screen. Man-to-man -man coverage, no safety help. Against Ross. They'll run it with Dawkins on third down and nine. And he's going to be stopped about a yard and a half shy by Bijan Parker. Going away from tendency that time on a passing down. And now Nick Stevens is still out there, so perhaps this was the plan all along for Mike Bobo. Four down territory at this point of the field. And you'll notice Izzy Matthews, the big bruising running back, checks in for the Rams. He's the one who converted third and two. This is fourth down and a long one. Matthews grabbed from behind. He may not have gotten it. How about the start to this game? Two long drives on both sides. Both teams unable to convert on fourth down. And we've already played nine plus minutes in this game. Last week, New Mexico couldn't get any stops against Fresno. Here they are tonight against the best offense in the Mountain West showing up with a big stop to get their offense to football back. We got a good one. Come on back. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Axe. Find your magic. Most populous city in the state of New Mexico. Over a half a million people in Albuquerque. Closer to a million with the metro population. And it's the only word in the English language that has the word Q twice in it. Bad pitch and catch between Jordan and Jordan, Lamar could not find Rommel cleanly, and it's a loss of six to start this drive. Sloppy opening play for the drive, and sloppiness has been an issue for this New Mexico offense all season. They've had 13 turnovers this year, Adam, and the, la the previous two years, 14 for the entire season. Yep. An area that they're definitely looking to improve starting this evening. Both teams with a turnover on downs to start the night. Very often we get two fourth down stops yeah. to start a game. Straight up the gut. Chestnut with a big run. Daryl Chestnut out across the 40-yard line. Jamal Hicks caught up to him after a 21-yard sprint for the senior from Florida. They wanted to run the football between the tackles. Right side of the offensive line. Excellent job caving down. And opening up a big hole for Chestnut. You see the speed in the open field. Very nice game for the senior out of Florida. That right side has Chris Estrella in for two injured right tackles. Teton Saltis and Israel Castellanos are both out tonight. Another good sprint by Owens. So, Dusty, for those who are uninitiated, tell me about why it's so tough to stop the triple option that Bob Davey runs. Because, man, it's all about discipline. It's all about having uh, a responsibility and sticking with it. 
but you see so many other things with your eyes. You think it's going there. You think it's a handoff here. If you start peeking as a defender, you're going to get burned. It's a discipline, responsibility sound defense that you have to play to slow down this New Mexico offense. And so far, Colorado State kind of guessing, kind of looking in the backfield, thinking they know as the football, as opposed to playing their gap and their responsibility. Back to Owens. Another run for a first down. This time to the 30-yard line. Nice cut there to get to the edge. Tyrone Owens. It's a running back, Adam, that over 1,000 yards last season. He had five 100-yard games. So far this year, he has not lived up to the guy he was last season, yet to have a 100-yard game, and you know, really hasn't been getting the big chunk runs that he's accustomed to having. He averaged eight yards per carry last year, top five in the country, about four and a half this year. Mm -hmm. But those numbers are down across the board for New Mexico's offense. McCorley with a good cut and steamrolls to another first down into the red zone. They call this position the cruiser. It's a fantastic job by the tight end, getting outside, getting a good, clean block from a Quirley to cut and get up the field. Marcus Williams, the tight end, or cruiser as they call it here, doing a nice job setting the edge and allowing his running backs to get to the open field. Four straight first downs. Finally, Colorado State gets some penetration up front, led by Jamal Hicks, the safety. He'll hit you now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's got good size, a downhill safety, very aggressive. He will bring the hat. Jamal Hicks, a sophomore out of California, grew up in a very tough neighborhood. He's got a two-year-old daughter named Camilla, who lives with her mom a few blocks from the neighborhood and where he grew up. This is his out, he said playing college football right now, going out to Fort Collins, getting an opportunity, just a sophomore. It's a really, really good story about this young man. To the edge, Ramel Jordan with a penalty marker thrown back near the 20-yard line. Like Darnell Thompson had some good penetration inside. Holding offense, number 79, 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. That was Chris Estrella who got tagged for that holding penalty. It's one of the things we worried about or wondered about coming into this night. The offensive line shaken up a bit. Chris Estrella, typically the left guard, he's having to start at right tackle tonight. Charlie Gramlin at left guard, two different right tackles. Teton Saltis and Israel. Cassianos both out tonight for New Mexico, so they've had to shake things up. Really, that there was the first time we've seen a blemish for this New Mexico offensive line. First pass of the night. Jordan has a man. It's Patrick Reed. They can lull you to sleep before they hit you downfield. Well, this is not Lamar Jordan's strength, throwing the football down the field, but an excellent route by Patrick Reed. See a little head shake inside. He's trying to get outside in the out route, beats the coverage, and on time and on target for the senior quarterback, Lamar Jordan. Excellent timing between the quarterback and his wide receiver. That was just the 59th throw for Lamar Jordan. And this is the seventh game for New Mexico this year. McCorley. You know, I think there's a lot of running backs that would end up taking a loss there. That's really good patience by a senior to get some yardage out of that play. Appeared nothing was there to the edge. As you mentioned, it kind of seemed like he might just go out of bounds to the sidelines. Sticks his left foot in the ground, gets upfield, picks up a couple on first down. We'll check on the injured Ram when we come back. Final minute of this opening quarter.
Well, a tough play for Colorado State's defense. Watch 94 Darnell Thompson kind of have his head snap back. And then you see seven Jamal Hicks kind of grab towards his wrist and roll down in some pain. Those are two very good defensive players that both went down on one play there. And Hicks is actually headed back towards the locker room to get tended to while Thompson is on the sideline. Big hitting safety and most dominant defensive lineman they have both out for this big snap. Yeah, second down and goal. Straight up the middle, Rock McCorley. Touchdown Lobos. That's all that Richard McCorley has done in his career. 31st career touchdown. For as rough as last week was for New Mexico, the start that they've had here this evening, the, showing the ability to reestablish the rushing attack for their defense to get a stop. Bob Davey likes the response he's seeing out of his team. Extra point from Jason Sanders is the 100th of his career. Well, Bob Davey told us yesterday, our backs are against the wall. We got to show up and we got to fight. It's early in the first quarter, but New Mexico's got the ground game going. Can their defense get a stop? We'll see on the other side. The last time the Orange knocked off the Canes, 1998, Mr. Donovan McNabb was the quarterback. They did it at home against Clemson last week, and they do it in a potential rainstorm in Miami Gardens. We'll find out 3.30 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app tomorrow. What that quarterback for Syracuse, Eric Dungy. Yep. Third in the FBS, just under 2,500 yards of total offense. Dino Babers has the orange offense rolling right now. Going to be a great matchup tomorrow. Colorado State will start from the 25 on the other side. Bob Davies said we're unified this week after we struggled a week ago. Off to a good start in Albuquerque tonight. Thirty five seconds to play in this opening quarter. Colorado State will touch it for the second time trying to get to bowl eligibility for the fifth consecutive year. Trying to stay unbeaten in the Mountain West. This is what Dalen Dawkins can do foot in the ground and in the blink of an eye he's into enemy territory. That's a 29-yard run by Dawkins. When we talk about violent runner, this is exactly what we're talking about with Daylon Dawkins. It's an inside zone, and as you mentioned, Adam, one foot in the ground, one cut, and the explosiveness, the speed, and the open field. Nice pickup to get this drive started. Limping a little bit as he went to the sideline there. There's a drop by Gallup. It'll be a forward pass incomplete. That'll take us to the end of the quarter. This is the end of the first quarter. Dawkins limping around a little bit to close out that first quarter. He'll have a breather as we hit the end of the first 15 minutes. New Mexico trying to bounce back tonight. Colorado State trying to keep it rolling in Mike Bobo's third year. Good one so far. Back here in Albuquerque, and a couple defensive players for Colorado State banged up early. Darnell Thompson is back on the sideline, though, but safety Jamal Hicks still back in the locker room. He's questionable with the right forearm injury, Adam. And Molly, Dalen Dawkins, who was limping at the end of that first quarter, gets the play fake here. Stevens, deep shot, underthrown for Gallup, and he could not corral it. That's the fourth target on Gallup. He has only picked up one reception thus far. And New Mexico in that first quarter did what Bob Davey was hoping they do. That's control the football. We talked to him yesterday, as well as offensive coordinator Bob DeBees. Both of them echoed the same sentiments. First downs and controlling the clock. Probably the biggest key for a New Mexico, for a recipe for a New Mexico victory. Third and ten. New 
Mexico brings pressure, and it gets to Stevens. Garrett Hughes, who was impressive last year against Colorado State, gets the sack. Just the third sack allowed all year by CSU. Well, Garrett's going to be lined up here, and there's so there's so many guys at the line of scrimmage. He comes inside a little a little swim over the guard. Guards looking away at somebody who's looking like they're going to blitz, and he just comes scot free to pick up a big sack on third down. Ryan Stonehouse drills one. And Chris Davis will do a good job of picking it up and keeping the yardage out towards the 15. Back to that sack. You know, and Colorado State's been so good this year protecting Nick Stevens. Only two sacks on the season. But the things that New Mexico does defensively, as much pressure as they show, they really stress an offensive line to get their calls right. And all of a sudden, this offensive line see all these bodies at the line of scrimmage. They don't know who to identify. And an excellent job by Hughes getting up the field, putting a quick sw swim move. And when you get inside pressure on a quarterback, it's tough for him to get rid of the football. And now the New Mexico rushing attack, which was very sharp in the first, goes back to work. And another good run from Tyrone Owens. Inside the 30 of Colorado State. The interior of this New Mexico offensive line has just been outstanding so far here this evening. Nice push in the middle. Talking about the center, Blaze Fountain. He gets good push, opens a big hole. Owens with excellent speed in the open field and good vision to see the hole as offensive line to open up and hit it downhill at full speed as he's working on his best game of the season, Adam. Right back to him. Schlager makes the stop, and Jake Schlager is going to play a very important role the rest of the way. He is in for Jamal Hicks, and we're being told that Jamal Hicks will not return to this game. The hard-hitting safety for Colorado State. Well, Schlager's a seasoned vet. It's his fifth year in the program. Played as a true freshman, had a red shirt, sophomore season due to injury, but he's played a lot of football, high football IQ. You hate to lose Jamal Hicks, but nice that you have a veteran who's played a lot of football to come in when he departs. 51st career game for Schlager tonight. Good penetration up front by Watson. Like this guy, man. Josh Watson just has a nose for the football. Tax blockers, very instinctive. And you always look at the picture on film. 55 is always in the frame, man. That guy's always around the football. Nice job playing on the other side of the ball, setting up a third medium. He's the team's leading tackler. Play he had against Nevada sealed the game. Pass breakup last week. Yeah. Coming off the edge on a blitz. Third and three. And there he is again right on cue. Like a blur into the backfield to bring up fourth down. So instinctive, man. He reads it and boom, downhill right now. Josh Watson, he ain't messing around. And a big third down. His defense needs to stop. Fits right off the offensive tackle. Back to back, nice plays by the junior linebacker out of Missouri. Included for Marty English, the defensive coordinator for Colorado State. One of the great kickers in college football. Didn't miss last week against Fresno from 44. Jason Sanders with a couple of misses in back-to-back -back games. This guy's been one of the best in the nation. And New Mexico comes up empty with great plays by Josh Watson on this electric Friday night in Albuquerque, New Mexico.
It's a really good conference, and I don't think people realize some of the star power that you have. Michael Gallup, we're getting a chance to see him tonight. We've seen a lot of Leighton Van Der Esch, one of the great tacklers in college football for Boise State. What a job Jeff Tedford has done since inserting the former Oregon State Beaver Marcus McMarion in at quarterback. This is a potential Heisman candidate, Rashad Penny, out at San Diego State, coming off their first loss of the year. Stevens. What a grab! Dalton Fackrell! You want to talk about star-studded plays, that's a jaw-dropper by the senior from South Jordan, Utah. Well, talk with Will Friend, the offensive coordinator, said Dalton Fackrell couldn't outrun me, but he's got great hands and he's a savvy veteran. Excellent concentration going up and getting to a two and holding up with one hand to show the referee, I got that. Now Matthews with a good run out near midfield. Good start to this offensive set for Colorado State. His concentration goes up, grabs with two. He can't keep the left hand on it or the right hand on it, so he just holds it up with one. That's outstanding job by Dalton Fackrell. Man. There's some big mitts holding on. I guess more accurately, mitt. There is Matthews again. Rams aren't messing around on this drive. 26 more yards for Izzy Matthews. Like at the end how Izzy Matthews was seeking out the defender. Yeah. He wanted to inflict punishment on Bijan Parker. Physical runner, Izzy Matthews. Flag was thrown on the snap here, so we'll check the penalty marker. And this is kind of the balance they talk about. Yeah. A play action pass right back with the run. Now they've got this defense on their heels, not knowing what to expect. There are two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Offside by the exiting substitution. Substitute is declined. Illegal substitution, the 12th man did not make it off the field. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. And we've seen some real sloppiness to start this game for Bob Davies crew. Trying to get off the field. They don't change personnel groupings, so the referees don't have to wait. They get off the field faster as a defensive player. Another flag is thrown. Gallup with double coverage this time from Burrell and Parker, and then a second flag gets tossed. This has become borderline ridiculous with New Mexico's inability to hold their water, watch the football, and not jump off sides. If this is another offsides penalty, that's four. Well, three guys jump, so I'd be shocked if it's not. And then I'm interested to see what that second flag was when Gallup went into the air as well. There are two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Offside, number 53 is declined. Pass interference, number 13. A 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. You get more yardage with that Burrell pass interference. Listen, the Rams were looking pretty sharp to start this series. If you're Bob Davies' team, you don't need to help them anymore. Jalen Burrell working on Michael. Gallup, that's a lot of contact with yep. the ball in the air. Good call that's, by that's the That's an easy call. Yeah. So just like that, it's first and goal in less than 90 seconds. Matthews inside the five. Dejon Parker coming up from the safety position. A nice hit on Matthews. We saw the New Mexico defense earlier on the opening drive bend but not break. They allowed Colorado State move the football pretty effectively and bowed their backs on a fourth and one. We'll see inside the five if they can match that effort. This has been one of the best red zone offenses in college football against one of the worst red zone defenses in the country. Matthews rumbles ahead, third down and goal from about the two. The underdog against the unbeaten. How about those QBs? Eric Dunchy, the veteran. Malik Rozier for the eighth-ranked Hurricanes. Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. 
and the ESPN app. Seems like it could be a good spot for a play action pass. Pounded between the tackles a couple times. A big physical running back. Got a feeling New Mexico is going to sell out to try to stop this run. This is the jumbo set for Colorado State. And I think there was movement off the right side. Trey Full Moxley. start. Offense number 60. Five yard penalty. Third down. So Trey Moxley has been part of a rotating offensive line as well. He's been starting at left tackle. And that time he was lined up on the right side as basically an extra offensive lineman. So maybe some unfamiliar territory there. Tackle over. Move him to the right side as you mentioned. Unfamiliar territory. That sounds like an excuse to me. You got to hold your water. You're an offensive lineman. Hmm. Bad penalty. One that'll make Mike Bobo give somebody an earful on the sidelines. Gallup, bottom of the formation. Double move, and they find Fackrell. That was a pretty offensive play for the Rams. I love the play design. I love the deception. I mean, not only is he a great receiver, but he's a heck of a decoy. To have Excellent too, man. decoy. It's exactly right. <laughs> Fakes the screen. You see Bijan Parker, the safety, bite on the screen. And Dalton Fackrell wide open in the end zone for a ramp touchdown. For Fackrell, that's now four straight games that he's had a touchdown reception. And Fackrell's score ties this game. A frustrating series for Bob Davey on that New Mexico defensive drive. It's been a frustrating couple of weeks for Bob as well and this program. We'll tell you on the other side. A stressful time for New Mexico and the coaching staff and the players the last couple of weeks. Hosting Air Force back on September the 30th. Five Lobos players actually knelt during the national anthem, which due to weather delays was played unexpectedly at halftime. The band all of a sudden rushed to go play with the team still on the field. Now Bob Davey has been unified with the players in support of their decision to kneel, which has caused some backlash for Davey and the players from within the school and the community. You see Bob Davey talking about this on October the 3rd, saying that he supports his players. Very odd situation when the national anthem began to play. Ramel Jordan on the return for New Mexico. And for more, we check in with Molly McGrath. Yeah, Adam, Bob Davey brought the kneeling incident up to us. He was very candid about the subject, admitting that the backlash affected both he and his team in their loss to Fresno State, saying, it changed me. I wasn't at my best. I wasn't focused and spent too much time thinking about things other than winning football games, end quote. And he took responsibility for the loss, called it a reality check, and said they are much more focused this week. Yeah, Bob, when he brought that incident up to us, you could tell that he was being affected by it. He said that the backlash affected he and the team in their 38 to nothing loss against Fresno State. And compounding matters for Bob Davey and the Lobos, the school announced last month that it was investigating Davey for alleged mistreatment of players stemming from some customary exit interviews of departing players in addition to some alleged compromised drug tests. So Davey indicated at the time that he would not be able to comment until the investigation is completed that remains the case as we stand right now in week eight of the season well the distractions made for a long bye week filled with analysis and conversation amongst players and coaches football seemingly took a back seat for this team it really proved itself out after an embarrassing loss there in fresno that loss was a real wake-up call for this team for bob davy his staff they're committed to refocusing and gaining their edge on the field. The short week couldn't have come at a better time, man. There's no time to worry about distractions. And has allowed everyone to get back on the same page with the solitary focus being all about one thing, football. And you see the quote that he gave to the Albuquerque Journal earlier this week. Trying to focus on the rest of this season. With a 3-3 three and three start, trying to get hot in the second half as they did a year ago.
Darnell Thompson who was banged up a little bit earlier in this half. He's back on the ground now as the training staff tends to him. We'll step aside. ESPN College Football brought to you by Chevy the only brand earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards for cars trucks and SUVs two years in a row. There are some great mountain ranges across this great country but among metro uh, metropolitan areas a population of over a half a million Albuquerque gets up there man this is no joke. You got Tucson, you got El Paso, you got Salt Lake City, you got Denver. I feel like we've been to all those places this year. And right up there is Albuquerque, over 5,300 feet for its elevation. You can get a little tough playing here at times. Owens brought down by Max McDonald. It'll be third down coming up here. Molly was telling us earlier that she went for the workout today. She was, yeah. she was having a little bit of trouble breathing with the elevation. I had a little bit of trouble earlier today on my run. Yeah, it was very reminiscent of our time in Provo as we decided to run <laughs> up a mountain. I was running on the treadmill today. I had a really hard time. You wonder how that's affecting the team and also how the ball is flying through the air. You saw Nick Stevens under overthrowing it a little bit in the beginning. Yeah, really good point, Molly. You, got, you just got to wonder how long it takes you to adjust. Third play for Tavaka Tuioti. And he just floated it too high for Tyrone Owens. Bob DeBest, the offensive coordinator, said that around the third or fourth series, depending on how the offense was looking, Tavaka Tuioti would get his opportunity to come in and we'll see and reevaluate from there. Based on that series, my guess is we might see Lamar Jordan or Colton Gerhardt on the next drive. Well, Lamar Jordan's been fantastic. This offense has been running very efficiently with him at the helm. Now, Tuioti gives him a different dimension. He's more of a thrower. They can get the RPO game going. It can open up the offense a little bit more with him at the helm, but I would agree. I'd expect to see Lamar Jordan next series in the Lobo offense. How about this punt by one of the best in the business? Corey Bohorquez flips the field to the 11-yard line. His career long was an 80-yarder against Colorado State last year. That one was good for 78, a season high. He likes the elevation. Yeah, you, Molly made a good point. You wonder how the ball's flying? Pretty good off this guy's foot. And don't forget, there's wind out here, too. That's why when you're seeing that wind is with the football. Earlier when we were watching, we watched Nick Stevens throw the football with the wind. I think that is what was aiding those passes to sail a little bit further than what he had anticipated. As you can see, it's, it's whipping a little bit up there, Adam. Yeah, I did the bowl game here in New Mexico last year. There were gusts up to 50, 55, 60 miles an hour a year ago. The wind will get there. So we go from one 11-yard line to the other. And now Colorado State with play action. Stevens for Johnson. And he came down with it across the 40-yard line, beating Jalen Burrell. And Ola B.C. Johnson is slow to get up after the 30-yard grab. Nice job by Olabisi well, Johnson. It's the post route, man to man coverage with Jalen Burrell. And Johnson gets inside position and a nice throw from his quarterback, Nick Stevens. Fortunately, Johnson down on the turf. Good to see him pop up. But one of the things about New Mexico's defense, they do not give safety help. Those safeties are at about eight yards, they're up almost at the line of scrimmage. So. A lot of these shots that we're going to see, we've seen Colorado State take and miss on. Expect to see these shots continue to come because whether it's Michael Gallup, Ola B.C. Johnson, Dietrich Clark, no safety help over the top on these throws down the field. New Mexico likes to bring a lot of pressure, what is called zero coverage. So that means one on one pretty much across the board. Yeah. Safeties are playing at seven, eight yards. Yes. Stevens too tall for Gallup that time and he had D'Angelo Ross in coverage Looks like Stevens is a little frustrated with himself in this first half throws are high 
several times now we've seen him overthrow his wide receivers, overshooting his guys. Just four of nine so far on the evening for the savvy senior quarterback, Nick Stevens. And he's targeted Gallup six times, but Gallup only has one grab. It really wasn't a grab. Great penetration up front. That's Kenny Okonkwo, the senior out of Texas. Veteran of 33 games. And now another player is down. This has been a first half of attrition. This is the 25 year old redshirt senior Johnny Williams. He graduated high school in the spring of 2010 and then went off and became an MMA fighter for three years. Came back to football. He redshirted in 2015 and then got back into the rotation the last two years. This is a tough dude up front. We've been talking about Nick Stevens' inability to find his go to man, Michael Gallup, down the field. He's had a lot of one on one situations. Gallup's had coverage beat, but Nick Stevens has been unable to locate the nation's leading wide receiver in yards. So far this evening, you can tell the frustration both on Nick Stevens and on Michael Gallup. Big third down for the Colorado State offense. They set up the screen for Dawkins. Can he get there? He does. First down for Colorado State. They convert. For those of you who may have been flipping around after baseball, the Astros with a victory over the New York Yankees to force a game seven in the American League Championship Series. So if you've found a football game, we welcome you out west. Albuquerque, New Mexico, the site. Adam Amin, Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath, and our fantastic crew at Dream Style Stadium. Unbeaten in the Mountain West, Colorado State, New Mexico, looking for a bounce back after being shut out last week. The Rams have won seven in a row against the Lobos. They're in plus territory. And Izzy Matthews will pick up two yards. If Colorado State wins tonight, they'll be bowl eligible for the fifth consecutive season, and they will stay unbeaten in the Mountain West. You have to go back a decade and a half when Sonny Lubick was still the head coach the last time that Colorado State started conference play 4-0. They're doing very well under Mike Bobo. Mike Bobo said after last year's disappointing bowl loss, the expectations were simple. There's no gray area. We expect to be in position for a conference championship and early on in the season, but they're right where they want to be. This might be another offsides penalty. Offside defense, number 95, five yard penalty. Repeat second down. That is now five offsides penalties against New Mexico's defense. I understand as a defensive lineman, believe me, <laughs> wanting to get off the football. If anybody to, understands, I know you wanting do. Wanting to pal. gain that advantage, right? But you got to watch the football, man. It's that simple. I'm sorry. I mean, fool me once. Shame on, shame on me. I mean, I just. It's crazy to me how many times we've now seen New Mexico jump yeah. offside. That's seven defensive penalties against New Mexico. Five are offside penalties. That's a nice ankle tackle by D'Angelo Ross. And that stops Matthews just shy of the line to gain. Can only imagine what Bob Davies going to have to say to his defensive line at halftime. Third down and short, and Stevens with the sneak for the first down. Now, this is an explosive Colorado State offense, so I would imagine Bob Davies happy that it's only seven points, but there's a lot of things that they need to clean up right now because. You can't keep giving this Rams offense opportunities. They're too good. It's a matter of time before they're going to catch fire and get into their rhythm and get into their groove. You can't give them free yards. You can't make mistakes if you expect to pull off an upset here this evening. Stevens got it out to Johnson quickly, and the spin move got on the first down. 
down to the 14-yard line. Olabisi Johnson. Good route by Olabisi Johnson, who works from the inside. A little out route, but what I like even more, Michael Gallup on the outside. Watch Michael Gallup. Get out in front. A little block on Burrell, leading his wide receiver down the field. There's an NFL scout somewhere smiling right now. <laughs> got to do it all in the National Football League. You got to be able to catch the football, and you got to be able to block outside. Throwing the fade for Johnson. And he held on for the touchdown. This is a play that Nick Stevens checks to. He sees exactly what he wants. He looks over, no safety help on Ola B.C. Johnson, and he throws the fade. For a nice touchdown. They started that drive at their own 11-yard line. And just like that, four minutes later, they're on top. Well, Colorado State's offense was sleepwalking early, but they've come to life. Nick Stevens sees the matchups he likes, throws the fade, and great concentration in the end zone. Can New Mexico answer? We'll find out. Impressive couple of series from Colorado State marching down the field to score two straight touchdowns. And now the Rams are on top on the road. Braxton Davis kicks away. Very short kick and Ramel Jordan. He down out across the 25. Well, this is when the really tough part of Penn State's schedule begins. A whiteout in Happy Valley Saturday night football on ABC, 7.30 Eastern time. Also available on the ESPN app. Michigan, ranked 19th in the country, comes to town to take on the number two ranked Penn State Nittany Lions. At Michigan rush defense against Saquon Barkley, that Penn State offense, I can't wait, man. That's a stingy defense Jim Harbaugh has. By the way, Jim Harbaugh, he needs a big win like that. Yeah. I think, it's, I think it's going to be a good one in Happy Valley. To the OT, can't connect. McCorley dropped it. It'll be second down on the second series for Tavaka Tuioti. This is exactly what you were talking about. No one uh -uh. has run for 100 yards on Donnie Brown's defense this year. Not up in here, they say. <laughs> Now, I, th I think this is going to be a good football game. My question is, can John O'Corn and the Michigan offense, can they move the football? Because Penn State, they have a salty defense in their own right. Yeah. But let's not kid ourselves. Saquon Barkley, most people's number one for the Heisman. Gets one of the better front sevens in all of college football. Must see TV tomorrow night. Colorado State calls their first time out of the half. 30 seconds. And Penn State's about a two-score favorite in that game at home. But... Saquon is in front of that Heisman race going forward this week. Call me crazy. I think Michigan, I think Michigan's going to show up and play well. Okay. I'm expecting Penn State. We'll, we'll find out tomorrow. A look at Bob Davey, 62 years of age. What a job he's done. Of course, that five-year stint at Notre Dame, he won 35 and lost 25. Some of the coaches that Amazing have staff, been under him. Ooh. I mean, an incredible staff at Notre Dame. He turned out a bunch of head coaches. Joker Phillips was at Kentucky for a while. I mean, that is an impressive list. <laughs> Tuioti pitched it out. And another big run for Tyrone Owens. But a penalty marker flies in late as Owens worked out nor, uh, near midfield. That flag, that flag came flying in from way back. Yeah, back near the 31-yard line is where the flag landed. They're going to get Marcus Williams. Up here, it looked like he had a good clean block.
personal ask. Defense number eight. 15 yard penalty to the end of the run. First down. Mike Bobo is beside himself. Looks like Jake Schlager got tagged for the face mask. Really nice block on the perimeter by Williams. Again, we've seen that cruiser, that tight end position, have so many blocks tonight, securing the perimeter and allowing these running backs to rip off some big runs. That was an easy call. The that guy you were talking about, Williams, doing the blocking, got his face mask held. Excellent call. Good job by Max McDonald on the stop. And just like that, New Mexico's in business. You know, for all the talk of Colorado State's level of explosiveness offensively, at its best, this is a New Mexico team that is just as explosive in the run game. I had two of their games last year, and obviously they were the best rushing team in the country last year. But that was all chunk plays that they were picking up. So at its best, and we've seen flashes of it this year, this is an explosive running attack too. There's no question. It's a great point you make, Adam. It's We think of explosive plays so much in the passing game. Well, can also have explosive plays in the running game. And this triple option, it really opens it, opens itself up for those some of those explosive plays. I would say so far this evening, they've run the football and had some of those splash plays more so than they've had all season. Capped it off with a second bowl win since 1962. They had gone, they hadn't gone to back-to-back -back bowl games since the early 2000s when Rocky Long was still the head coach. Bob Davey trying to bring this team to three straight bowl games. They're sitting at three and three right now. To EOT going deep. And incomplete for Q Drennan. A redshirt sophomore from El Paso has been a big play threat his whole New Mexico tenure, and he just couldn't bring it in. Oh, man. Tuioti drops a dime. Q Drennan's got to pay him off. That ball goes between his hands. Could have been a walk-in touchdown off a very well-thrown football from Tavaka Tuioti. That's the second drop we've already seen here in these last couple of drops. To EOT, two men out there that had a chance at it. It was Williams and Davis both there. There is a penalty marker thrown, and I wonder if there's going to be a holding penalty that gets declined. The penalty is declined. It's fourth down. That was Estrella. Number 79. Off the right side who got tagged with that holding penalty again. RJ Gene working off the right side. Getting a hold. Oh, and that was through the hands of Davis, too. Not commonplace. We see the Lobo offense throwing the football in back to back plays. Yeah. Which is kind of kind of odd, right? They've been running the football so effectively, and then they go away from it once they get there inside the 35. Well, now a 51 yard try for Sanders, who's missed already tonight. Jason Sanders this time buries it from 51 yards. You wonder if Mike Bobo had accepted that penalty, maybe left his defense out there. Do you take that risk? But the Rams will settle for giving up three here after a good kick. Minute 16, plenty of time for this explosive Colorado State offense to operate. We'll see them go to work in a moment. Well, Sunday NFL Countdown gets week seven going before the big Super Bowl rematch. Tom Brady and Matt Ryan both sit down for an inside look at that Super Bowl game, plus Randy Moss with You Got Moss. And of course, maybe the best team in the NFL. I'm sure the Chiefs would have something to say about that, although the Raiders got the best of them. The Philadelphia Eagles. Ed Speed is very excited for this one, our stats man.
at home against the Redskins on Monday night. Monday night countdown served by Applebee's starts it all up at 6.15. Sanders, one of the best touchback kickers in the nation as well, drills another one. Well, if you've heard of him, I feel like you have. He might be a front runner for MVP so far through six games. Carson Wentz, a notable draft pick from outside the Power Five. These are big time NFL players coming from non Power Five programs. A lot of talented guys, not just in the Power Five, but also in the group of five. And man. Look at Khalil Mack was a top five pick in last year's NFL Defensive Player of the Year. How about Derek Carr last night getting it done for the Raiders? Yeah, had a broken back a few weeks ago. That dude oh, throwing man. for 400 yards last night. By the way, highest paid player in the National Football League. It's not too bad. Demarcus Lawrence I was there for say, a while. That's, that's the man right now off the edge. Cowboys need him big time to continue to get good pressure. But, and we're looking at some guys here this evening. Michael Gallup might be someone in a few years we're talking about on a list like that. All right, Dust, you talked about it. Plenty of time with two timeouts for Colorado State. Underneath Stevens, good grab by Johnson at the 31-yard line. So we're having a veteran quarterback is really beneficial for an offense to be able to run the two-minute drill, get people lined up, still run efficient, effective offense. Good grab that time by Fackrell. Boy, we've seen his hands on display in this first half. I can't get over when we talked to Will Friend, and I was telling him how much I liked him on the tape. He says, Dalton couldn't outrun me. <laughs> but he runs great routes. He's a savvy veteran. He understands coverage, and he's got great hands. All has been on display here this evening. The first of those three catches was probably the coolest one. The one-handed grab for 17 yards. He had the touchdown to get Colorado State on the board as well. Matthews with a hole up the middle and a lot of space in front of him. All the way down inside the 15-yard line. I love this play call. And to me, this is Nick Stevens identifying the defense no safeties in the middle of the field and a really nice job in the interior of the offensive line picking up the blocks gallup gets close to the goal line clock approaching a half a minute to go officials timeout for an injured player Couldn't get a clear look as to who that is for New Mexico down. I believe it's Bijan Parker. It is Bijan Parker indeed. Just like that, Colorado State in prime position after that long Matthews. Look at what Nick Stevens is looking at here. You see that? No safeties in the middle of the field. He checks into this run and a nice job on the interior of the offensive line. 71. <laughs> Jeff Taylor, 77, Jake Bennett, the center, open up a massive hole, and Izzy Matthews runs to daylight for a big pickup to get him inside the red zone. Great identification by the senior quarterback, Nick Stevens, to get his offense in the right play. And second down and one. A couple of fullbacks in there. And Matthews trying to go airborne. And he's going to be ruled short of the goal line. It would be good for a first down. And they would have potentially four chances to punch it in. And this also stops the clock to reset the chains. It's a great hit by Acasio up top. Matthews again. This time he's in. Less than a minute and the Rams ram it down the throats of this New Mexico defense. Explosive offense for Colorado State. And when a minute 16 was on the clock, you just kind of felt like that's plenty of time for this offense. It takes two times, but watch Izzy Matthews go up top and the big hit by Acasio to stone him at the goal line. And what do they say? If first you don't succeed, try, try <laughs> again. 
They go over the top the second time and get in the end zone. A little doink action, but that's good. Off the foot of Wyatt Bryant. Boy, that took less than a minute. And Izzy Matthews, who was one of three Rams to run for over 100 yards against New Mexico last year, gets the touchdown. We always we talk about the balance. Yep. 131, 144. Doesn't get much more balanced than that, Adam. Yeah, this is a really solid-looking offense. And most of this has come in the second quarter. Yeah. It's kind of a slow start for Colorado State offensively. Boy, they have put their foot on the accelerator. This offense is really showing what it's capable of. Yeah, there's three straight scoring drives for Colorado State. It's been some sloppiness, though, and I think Bob Davey would be the first to admit that on the defensive end. A lot of penalties, a lot of free yards. Colorado State doesn't need any help. These have been long touchdown drives, too. All three have been at least 75. Marcus Williams will just land on top of it after the squib kick. We've got some good games tomorrow, partner, on the ESPN Networks, and we're going to be using this. I'm sure you guys at home will be using it as well, sitting on your couch, bust out your tablet, you can double screen it. The ESPN app, a fan's best friend. You can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. That includes... Oklahoma State, Texas. How about the Cowboys going on the road? They went in Austin. Just barely a touchdown favorite on the road in Austin. It's a high-powered offense for Oklahoma State. No doubt, man. Mason Rudolph, James Washington, probably the best quarterback-wide receiver combo in college football. Texas defense going to have their hands full tomorrow with that high-powered Cowboy attack. Got LSU a touchdown favorite on the road at Ole Miss. Washington State, Colorado late night tomorrow, too. Colorado State with the advantage, and they'll have the ball at the start of the second half. After the timeout, we head back to the studio. Adnan Burke, Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer have the halftime. Great city of Albuquerque, New Mexico, the center of a lot of different spots. Why? It's equidistant between LA and KC. It's equidistant between San Francisco and New Orleans. Equidistant between Denver and Phoenix. This isn't stuff you can tell me that you knew coming into this night in Albuquerque. The center of attention for the college football world on college football prime time tonight. Nick Stevens and the Colorado State offense got sharp at the end of that first half. They get the ball to start half number two. A 21 to 10 lead for Colorado State. Storyline for the first half. Rhythm for New Mexico early. New Mexico got back to the basics. Running the football extremely effectively. Between the tackles, on the perimeter with the option. Really had it rolling just under 200 yards on the ground. But then before half, they went to the throwing game. Hopefully they go back to the running game. And it's the balance for the Colorado State Rams. Running the football between the tackles. Izzy Matthews there and Nick Stevens really got into a rhythm with the play action pass, throwing the football down the field. A lot of herky jerkiness on the defensive end for New Mexico. A lot of offside penalties in that first half. So that really helped Colorado State get into some rhythm at the end of the opening 30 minutes. I hate to say that an opening possession is ever the end-all, be-all. But I think this is an extremely important possession for the New Mexico defense to get a stop. As Colorado State scored their final three possessions heading into half. Don't want to let them do the same here to start the second. Dalen Dawkins breaks a tackle and has a good run on first down as we check in with Molly. Yeah, Adam, Bob Davey told me they'll play all three quarterbacks in this second half. He said we'll see even more of Colton Gerhardt because he wants to see more quarterback runs, and he's happy with the way his team is moving the ball. He said the most difficult part is stopping them. He's not happy with some of those mistakes on defense, and bad news for New Mexico's defense. Safety Bijan Parker is out with a broken forearm. Wow. That's a big loss on the defensive end for New Mexico. We're going to show this play to you one time. Number four is Parker. And 
basically got kicked by that strong leg of Michael Gallup, and that was it. Hope he's going to be okay. That is a tough mm. injury. Tough for Parker. He missed the second half of the season two years ago for the broken collarbone. And dealing with a potentially serious arm injury. All Dawkins to start the second half for Colorado State. Richard Sr. out of Louisville, Kentucky. A transfer from Purdue and the nephew of the nine-time Pro Bowler, Brian. He's got a little B-Doc in him. A little bit? Got some nastiness to him, man. That guy runs physical. He's not the biggest running back, 5'9", 185, but, man, he is a tough character to bring down. Very explosive and violent runner this offense. His dad, Ralph, a pretty good collegiate player at Louisville. Lobbing it up there for Johnson. Nearly intercepted by Ross. Well defended down the field. It's great coverage down the field. Man to man with D'Angelo Ross working on OBC Johnson. He's in good position, gets his head turned around. It's the pass breakup. Setting up third and long. Expect Kevin Cosgrove to dial up some pressure. Try to get the ball out quick from Nick Stevens. Stevens overthrows Warren Jackson, the freshman. You wonder if he was looking for Jackson to be somewhere else. That was miscommunication. You know, Warren Jackson, just a true freshman, running a corner. And as you can tell by Nick Stevens, his true freshman wide receiver, who looks great in a uniform, by the way, was not on the same page with his quarterback. Get a scolding from the fifth-year senior on the sidelines. The true freshman, Ryan Stonehouse, with his second punt. Dusty said it. New Mexico needed a stop to start this half, and they get one. A great roll inside the 15. Colorado State, their redshirt senior quarterback, Distributing the ball pretty well, but no Michael Gallup really involved just yet. He's found Dalton Fackrell. He's found old B.C. Johnson. Seems like everybody's getting involved, except the leading receiver in college football, Michael Gallup. Which is odd, because coming into tonight, Nick Stevens and him, Molly told us from the onset, the chemistry that these two are, have right now, how well they understand exactly what the other wants from from each, it's it's been kind of odd to see them not putting up any numbers. Mark Jordan will pitch it out to Jay Griffin. And a good coverage play on the perimeter by Kevin Nutt, the cornerback. Ends up being a loss of three. Dusty, I will say this to your point with Nick Stevens. He did target Gallup on the first, I think, four or five passes and just never really got into that early rhythm. So then he decided to maybe start distributing the ball elsewhere. I'm curious to see how this is going to play out in the second half if those two find their groove. My guess is yes, it will. They will find their groove. It will work itself out. Michael Gallup, too talented a wide receiver not to get going at some point this evening. Jordan with a nice pass. He finds Marcus Williams. That's the first career catch for the true freshman from Rio Rancho. 27 yards. Mark Jordan making an excellent throw to Williams, working out of the tight end position in that cruiser back. He's been, had an outstanding evening. Nice ball thrown above the safety, in between the two safeties, and an excellent job picking up the first down. Owens, solid run on first down. Richard King with the tackle. Lamar Jordan last year had to split some time as well and may end up splitting some time here in the second half at QB. And 
You saw Max McDonald go down for Colorado State. I've seen a lot of guys go down tonight. Mm -hmm. We're going to tend to Max McDonald here. We'll take a timeout as well. 11 and a half to play in the third. Max McDonald, who had started the last three games at linebacker, sophomore out of Fort Collins, Colorado, is going to head back towards the locker room. Watch 31 right here, stumbling forward and right into the shoulder of the cornerback, Sean Johnson, his own teammate. And we've been told he is going to undergo the concussion protocol and make sure he's okay. Glad that he's up walking around the yeah. way he took that shot. You never know. That's a good sign at the very least. Big run for Richard McCorley and New Mexico out of the timeout. Right back at it. 17 more yards for Rock McCorley there. It's been some big gaping holes this evening. Working off the left side, Avery Jordan. Excellent job, a huge, massive hole opened up for McQuirley. Another big run for the Lobo offense. Again, McQuirley. This time it was Patrick Elsenbest, redshirt senior, playing his 28th game with the staff. Jordan Keepin and good spill job by the former Utah Ute. Jordan Fogel to bring up third down. A big one Saturday night on ABC. Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart.com. Also available on the ESPN app. Happy Valley, the site for a top 20 matchup. Number 19, Michigan, that stingy defense taking on Saquon Barkley, the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy as it stands right now. This is where Penn State really shows its medal. They've got Michigan. Then they've got to go on the road at Ohio State and Michigan State the next three weeks. Wide out tomorrow night. Yeah, man. It's a great venue in Happy Valley. Jordan He's will got throw, it. yep. Third time that he was planning on throwing. And he'll step out of bounds to bring up fourth down. Lamar Jordan missed a wide yeah, you open saw it right touchdown. Away. You saw it. Oh, man. He's going to wish he had that one back. It's a wide open touchdown working off the left side. Never saw his slot receiver. Just wide open in the middle of the field. Receiver was playing outside leverage. It was a post route. Lamar Jordan never saw his target. And that's one of the things we talked with with Bob Davey and this coaching staff. His indecisiveness. His unwilling just to see it and let it go. And he looked at it and saw it. He just didn't believe his eyes and believe what he was seeing. New Mexico calls their first time out of the half. Fourth down coming up for Bob Davey and New Mexico. A field goal would make it a one score game. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Campbell's Chunky Max Sue. We'll fill in while you fill up. That's 115 California Street Northeast in Albuquerque, where childhood friends Bill Gates and Paul Allen essentially started the company Microsoft. In March of 1975, from that office, they introduced their first operating system to a company called MITS. A month later, when that Model was bought. 
It was officially established as Microsoft, that company, on April 4th, 1975, and it all started here in the 505. Fourth down and four for Lamar Jordan and the Lobos. To the sticks, incomplete, and a turnover on downs. Justin Sweet with good coverage on Aaron Molina. Passes high for Lamar Jordan, and what seemed like a promising drive ends in a turnover on downs. You know, Adam, these Friday night games, I, I love being educated by you, man. You, you bring up so much good stuff. You're always teaching me. You want me to educate you, man? Hit me. Hit me with something, brother. Whose birthday is it today? Who was born this day? Come on. This day? Who you got? Uh-oh. You can't use I, your I, phone. I, I got to look it up. Let's go. Right, I'm going to educate you. Snoop D O double G, man. Oh, come on. Absolutely. See? Come on. You bring the fancy bring schmancy education. I dig it. I'm a little different education. Oh, man. Big day for Snoop Dogg. I brought juice to the gin party. That's not good. If only we had combined those efforts, we might have been able to start something here. You're welcome, by the way. That was well done, sir. Hey, Dusty, you know who else's birthday it is today? I don't know, Molly. Oh, gosh. Let me give you a hint. He's on the field, and it's relevant to this game. <laughs> Evan Colorado, it's his birthday oh, today. Oh, very nice. He's the Buck yes. defensive end, the redshirt senior from Beaverton, Oregon. Happy oh, birthday to Evan. Yeah. Good stuff, Mal. And Snoop Dogg, <laughs> if you want. Snoop Dogg and Evan. Just tying it Today all Today we celebrate you guys. There he is, Michael Gallup beating Burrell for a first down. Might be a hold, though. There is a flag back at the 30-yard line. Nicho Garcia may get tagged with this one. Holding offense number 72. Take our penalty. Repeat second down. Indeed, that is Nicho Garcia. That was the birthday boy, Evan Colorado. He was the one who was getting this Colorado State Rams team riled up in pregame. Stevens hit as he launches it. Incomplete for Gallo. Aaron Blackwell brought the rush. Nose tackle working over the center. Nice job working on the center. It's that swim and the rip up. Good hit on the quarterback to disrupt the pass. You love hands, man. You always tell me about hand fighting and how important it is at the. And hips. Attack. You see how he turned his hips and got skinny. He was able to get in the gap and get up the field. Picture perfect job of the nose tackle. Screen incomplete for Dawkins. They had that set up too. You would have thought we saw this earlier on a third and 15 plus. They hit a screen for a big first down with Dawkins. So I was kind of anticipating screen again, thinking that New Mexico would be thinking the same thing, but they had it set up. Unfortunately, Dawkins unable to come down with a pass. First three and out for Colorado State. The last four games against New Mexico, Colorado State had only punted the ball four times. False start. This is going to be the third punt after this false start penalty. And it's going to help out New Mexico's field position. Double clutch there by the uh, long snapper. Trent Sieg is the long snapper. Illegal snap. Offense number 58, five yard penalty. It's fourth down. If you're mentioning the long snapper, and I saw your buddy uh, Patrick Manley the other night, 16 year NFL veteran with the Chicago Bears. I was chatting it up with him the other night. If you're mentioning the long snapper, it's not always a good thing. Right. Those are the guys you kind of want to be under the radar. Patrick Manley was outstanding when I was playing with the Chicago Bears. Great career there. The best in the business. Helped out by Stonehouse. Great punt. And it's misplayed by Davis. Good recovery and decent field position coming up for New Mexico. Listen, I give you a lot of credit for schooling me, but my man Aaron Blackwell, who had a really good play on that defensive series, yeah, buddy. How's that for, for some old school right there, my man? I like that. On a Friday night, look at some old school Dusty.
Well, over on ESPN, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, Sports Center from L.A. with Stan Barrett and Linda Cohn. The Lonzo Ball bounce back. How about Patrick Beverly getting up in his grill the other night on opening night? LeBron and Giannis Antetokounmpo, who I think is going to win an MVP within the next four years. And then Justin Verlander holding it down. The offense got going. George Springer a big night. Game seven forced by the Astros, Yankees, and Astros. All of that coming up on Sports Center at 1 a.m. Eastern over on ESPN. Tavaka to EOT. Deep shot, and he connects with Drennan. The first big pass play of the night for New Mexico. This is why they bring Tuioti into the game. Excellent arm, able to throw the football down the field. Drops a dime on Q Drennan. Change up the look for Colorado State defensively. They get lulled to sleep with their ability to run the football. It's man-to-man -man coverage outside and a big 47-yard gain for Tuioti to Drennan. When it's at its best, this New Mexico offense does get chunk plays in the pass game. What a run by Tyrone Owens. The patience, the hesitation, and the touchdown. That's what New Mexico needed. Sidelines have come to life. Big stop on defense. and. A very quick scoring drive for the Lobos. What a great individual effort by Tyrone Owens. A little two-step here, maybe a dancer. Whoop, whoop. Making guys miss, and you're right. Patience, and then his ability to accelerate into the open field. Good block by Charlie Grammel, and an outstanding run by Tyrone Owens. And now Jason Sanders has the all-time New Mexico record for most points after a touchdown with his 101st. The change of pace with Tuioti and the nice sprint by Owens after a little dance and a little do -si do for Bob Davey. Tyrone Owens, who suffered a foot injury last year in this game against Colorado State, muscles out another touchdown. This has been a series that has been very frustrating for New Mexico. They've lost seven in a row to Colorado State, and usually Colorado State has been the one putting the big plays together, the chunk plays, the explosive drives over the course of these last seven games or so against New Mexico. Bob Davies' crew with a nice start to this second half. Now Nick Stevens will take the field. Veteran quarterback, that's what Syracuse has with Eric Dungy. He led the upset against Clemson at the Carrier Dome a week ago. Now they have to go on the road. Miami's the only unbeaten team in the ACC, and this is gonna be a big one for Miami with potential rain in the forecast, Syracuse feeling good. Can they step up and do what a top 10 team is supposed to do? Weather will be interesting, because that could really affect Syracuse's ability to throw the ball. Love talking with head coach of Colorado State, Mike Bobo, about his relationship with Mark Rick. It was good stuff. Coach very excited. Mark Rick in Miami having so much success. There's that man. Yep. Nice start to the drive for Michael Gallup. 17 yards on that play. Easy pitch and catch. It's a quick hitch. Michael Gallup good in the open field. Getting good yak yards after the reception. Gallup lined up top of the formation. Johnson, nice catch in front of Ross. You, know, you were talking about the connections between coaches that we have a chance to see over the course of this weekend. We can stay right here in this game. Bob Davies defensive coordinator Kevin Cosgrove, longtime Barry Alvarez coordinator. Of course Mike Bobo was the quarterback, one of the greats for Georgia. A uh, pretty good Im impression that he made on that Wisconsin defense in the Outback Bowl in the late 90s and now these two square off 
in Mountain West play the last three years. Stevens out to Gallup. Forward progress will give him the first down. Nice job by Gallup working back to the football to help his receiver on a really long throw from the far hash. Picks up enough to move the sticks. Well, two targets and two catches on this drive for Gallup. The FBS leader in receiving yards entering action tonight. Matthews cut down. Good play by Stanley Barnwell. Second down coming up. Stanley Barnwell flying downhill from the safety position. Nice open field tackle around the line of scrimmage. These safeties for New Mexico, they don't play deep. They're about seven to eight yards off the line of scrimmage, and they will insert themselves into the run game. Another tackle for loss from this New Mexico front. Oconquo, the Texan, a loss of two. And Kevin Cosgrove's defense trying to get the stop on third down. Second one for Oconquo. Down here in the bottom. Just going to get upfield, penetrate. Big tackle for loss, setting up third and long. Just again, you said it, hands, hips. Third and 11. Looking for Johnson again, and it's broken up by D'Angelo Ross. Now this New Mexico defense has a pep in its step. D'Angelo Ross, I felt that he was the best cover guy outside for the New Mexico defense. Smaller in stature, but he's got great speed and good ball skills. Stay in the hip pocket of Johnson. Making an excellent play on the football and a big third down to get the Lobos of football back. Chris Davis back to return. As many punts for Stonehouse tonight as Colorado State had in the previous four meetings combined against New Mexico. This Lobo drive will start for the nine. This is a Colorado State team that is coming on the road tonight, trying to stay unbeaten in Mountain West play. It's a rough go in conference play on the road, no matter what league you're in. Tavaka Tuioti It's going to be the quarterback they're going to decide to roll with for back-to-back -back series, Adam. Mike Bobo's defense is going to try to step up. It's a program on the rise. Bob Davies said it himself. He thinks this is looking and shaping up more like a Power 5 team. Brand new stadium, brand new facility. The excitement is there. The recruiting class was the best in program history. This is a crucial game tonight for Colorado State. And their defense trying to make something happen. Emmanuel Jones with the penetration. True freshman out of Georgia. Nice play by Emmanuel Jones. Playing the other side of the football. Just going to get up the field, make a nice play in the backfield. Excellent job with the punch on the offensive tackle. Estrella getting separation. And then he identifies where the ball carrier is. He sets that edge, sheds the block. Makes an excellent play behind the line of scrimmage. Had a fabulous game against Utah State a couple of weeks back. Oh, bad exchange. Loose ball inside the five. And it looked like it was rescued by Tyrone Owens. Now that could have been disastrous for New Mexico this deep in their own territory. That's on the running back. I was going to say, I mean, is who do you blame that on? 100% the running back. I mean, he's, he hits it with his, with his hand as he's coming through. He's got to give him a nice, clean pocket. He can put the ball in. You, see, you can see Chestnut working right there showing. Or sorry, Owens showing where he should have done, but 
And that's that's unfortunate for the Lobo offense. And this is where they've struggled this season. So many third down and longs. To Ioti. Dropped by Zanir Schuler. And boy, field position becomes that much more important on this kick. What a disastrous drive that was. After they get a big stop defensively, to tackle for loss, a fumble, then a drop pass. Not what the Lobos were hoping for with a possession that could have given them the lead. Well, Horquez has had a 78-yarder already tonight. This one through the hands of Johnson. That's a live ball. And Johnson will save it. He helps New Mexico to flip the field. That could have been disastrous as well. A couple of very odd bounces all of a sudden. And after all that, it's Colorado State football. You were... This is what we're Skip talking about. Me. This is the pocket. So I'm going to use these uh, very fancy binoculars here. So if I'm coming in, it's got to be this wide. You're Absolutely. Me. And then you close down. Okay. Absolutely. Whenever he came in, he had his, it was almost like he punched the football out. You can't have your hands out in front. Absolutely like not. So you, you, that's where it's where Owens needs to fix that's it. That's exactly where we yeah. saw the quarterback running back exchange gaff. It was terrible. Uh, He's working or binoculars. I was working the binoculars really sure better we than we are. Yeah, that's for sure. That ends up being, by the way, a net punt of 71 yards. And Bohorquez's average is only going to go up tonight after a couple of long ones. Maybe a two-yard run there for Dawkins. Dawkins back to the sideline. This has been a physical game, brother. Both coaches talked about it. Play fake. Incomplete for Fackrell. Good coverage by the safety, Jacob Gurgle. Mentioned physicality, something that both coaches referenced. That's who Colorado State wants to be. That's their identity. And talking with Bob Davey, even with the short week, he get back Saturday night from Fresno at 4.30, watching the film Sunday, two padded practices that were physical, good on good, Monday, Tuesday, even shells with contact on Wednesday. They said, we know we're light on bodies, but we've got to become a more physical team. They practice that way, and they're playing like it here this evening. Big third down. New Mexico brings pressure. Little pop pass for Matthews and a first down. That's the poise of a veteran quarterback standing and delivering. Well, it's a blitz for New Mexico. It's man-to-man -man coverage. And they get Rothschiller matched up on Matthews right in the center of the field. Easy pitch and catch for Stevens to Matthews. Another easy one here to Warren Jackson, who breaks a tackle. And those long strides of the freshman get him 18 yards. Officials time out for an injured player. Boy, Ola B.C. Johnson is down for, I believe that's the second time we've seen him slow to get up after a play. And this is going right back to your point, man. Physical. I love that you asked Mike Bobo, by the way, about how to prep for the triple option. We were talking about his mentor, essentially, Mark Richt, guy who he worked for for a long time at Georgia. I was listening to Mark Richt talk about preparing for Georgia Tech, one of those triple option teams. And he did the same thing. A lot of coaches don't want pads, don't want contact. They want their guys fresh for when they do have to face that contact in live action. But Mark Richt told Paul Feinbaum a couple of weeks ago, before last week rather, before that Georgia Tech game, no, we went full pads. I want these guys to feel the contact. 
interestingly enough, Mike Bobo felt the same. They went full pads one day this week, shells another. Preaching physicality. That's really the only way you can prepare for some of these things is to do it full speed live in practice so you know exactly how it feels once you get into the game. Every defensive coordinator, a lot of head coaches say that this is the toughest week to prep for. The triple option week. Whomever happens to run it, and there's a small amount of teams out of the, what do we rank, what, 129 or so in the FBS? 128. 28. So this is the small sample size of teams mm -hmm. that run different versions of it. It might be the Veer, it might be the Flexbone offense, might be the true triple option, whatever it may be, it's that type of physicality that you need to have on the defensive end. And for Bob Davey, he wanted to run the triple option for a long time. He thought he would have loved to run it at Notre Dame because they play the service academies all the time and said, man, this is a physical game. I think I could run it. But you get different types of players at Notre Dame. You come out to New Mexico, a place like this, he says the triple option is the great equalizer. He also was tired of having to defend it as a defensive coordinator. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, too. Long week of prep. Gallup on the screen. And there's some second gear burst for the first down. Burrell brought him down. Finding ways to get Michael Gallup the football, taking several shots down the field, and they've come up empty. You've seen hitches, just a quick little easy throw to the outside, get him the football out in space. As you referenced, you see the speed to the sideline and the open field. He's a tough guy to bring down. 999 yards this year for Michael Gallup, the most in the country. Matthews with the hole. Flag is thrown as he hits the end zone. Coming back. This will probably come back with a flag at the 21-yard line. Holding offense number 71. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. It's Jeff Taylor, another Georgia native on this Colorado State roster. It's the fourth penalty against the Colorado State offensive line tonight. Speaking of physical, that's how I would describe Colorado State's offensive line. Big, yep. tough, physical. What they hang their hat on. For the most part tonight, they've been up to the challenge. One cut runner. Dalen Dawkins gets that penalty yardage back. We were watching tape the other day, man, and you said, hey, watch his foot go in the ground and the acceleration. He does that so well. He's explosive. And when he puts that foot in the ground, watch out. He can change direction, and he can get going north and south instantly. Very talented running back in Dalen Dawkins. Good penetration by the inside linebacker, Alex Hart. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. Colorado State seeking bowl eligibility for a fifth straight year and trying to stay unbeaten in the Mountain West. New Mexico trying to bounce back after a rough shutout loss last week. We've got a good fourth quarter from ABQ coming up. Let's get weird. I don't know if, if she just can't look right now. I don't know if she's nervous. It's a four-point game. We're going to the fourth quarter. Maybe? No, she's going to stay hidden inside there for now. Take a peek. Got a big third down, bud. Take a look. Third and long for Stevens. To the end zone. Dropped by Warren Jackson. 
This freshman had two touchdown grabs against Alabama, the number one team in the country earlier this year. He had one tailor-made for him there. Warren Jackson working out of the slot. It's a corner route. Perfect pass. I mean, a perfect pass over his shoulder. Would have been an easy touchdown for the true freshman. And Nick Stevens is frustrated that his wide receiver wasn't able to come down with the catch. Wyatt Bryan made his first eight field goals this year. And on his first try of the night, he makes it a seven-point lead. This has been a frustrating night for Stevens. Some overthrows for him early and some drops late. That was a great throw that he just made. Absolutely. Man. Stood right there in the pocket. Had exactly what he wanted. Wide receiver beat coverage and unable to come down with the catch. Eric Dungy, the veteran. Malik Rozier manning the controls of a top 10 Miami team. Saturday, 3.30 on ESPN and the ESPN app from Miami Gardens. Bob Ushusen, Brock Heward, the Miami girl, Allison Williams, will have the call. Miami will come in as a heavy favorite in that game, better than two scores. Got some good matchups next week, man. Don't let the non-ranked versus ranked matchups fool you. You saw what happened last week. Everybody thought, oh, this isn't going to be a fun weekend of college football. We had chaos a week ago. Never disappoints. We are part of it in Berkeley. Man, watching number 10 Washington State go down. Go down hard. You know, it's funny. Bob Davey brought that game up to us. Yeah. When we got a chance to talk with him and his staff, they said, you know, we kind of feel that way a little bit too, a little bit like Cal did. Remember two weeks ago, Cal went up to Seattle and just laid an egg. Mm. They scored zero points offensively. Their only points came out of fumble recovery. And then look what they do a week later. They trounce a top 10 team. And Bob Davies hoping his team has a similar bounce back tonight. Yeah, Adam, Bob Davey brought that up to me, too, and he said, it gives me a little bit of hope. You never know what's going to happen in college football. And Bob's been around it a long time. He's been a part of it from the field. He's been a part of it from the booth. And now he's back part of it again in what is becoming a really good conference. This Mountain West Conference is no joke. A lot of solid football teams that are physical, that run the football. In this part of the football game, the fourth quarter, typically teams that can win the line of scrimmage, can run the football, are going to have success. And as we get into later into October and November, those same teams that can run the football, that's where you make your hay late in games and where you really make your hay late in the season as well. That's how New Mexico did it last year late in the season. To EOT will run it for the first down into Colorado State territory. That's his best run of the day at 27 yards. And he's got some swagger, man. It's as fast as I've seen him run all year. Watching him on tape. Came in against New Mexico State, primarily a pass through the second half against Fresno last week. And I thought there at the end of that play, they missed the face mask on Kevin Nutt as he's going out of bounds. Yeah, he's Absolutely. got a hold of it there. Yeah, that could have easily been an extra 15 yards. High speed to the edge of the redshirt freshman. And once he gets that going, now play action pass opens up. Makes it tough to defend this triple option. Rock McCorley got stood up by Evan Colorado. Be second down and ten. I hope Mark Jones, as he and his crew are getting ready for their game right now, and I hope he remembers this. Our producer Kim Belton worked with Jonesy and Bob Davy for a long time, and. They had, the, the, this is the running joke on the crew. <laughs> Jonesy and Bob Davey, and people happen to call Bob Davey Joe Biden. <laughs> this, this was pretty good. That was a running joke amongst that crew. That was enough to draw a big, hearty laugh from the 62-year-old yesterday. Another flag thrown before this play. Jonesy, I hope you're watching, brother. Well 
number 18, moved and was not set. Penalty, second down. It was Chris Davis who got tagged with the illegal shift. Correction. The penalty is declined. Third down. Who do we look like, Adam? I'm not sure. That's a, twi that's a Twitter question if I've ever heard one. Although, maybe I'm scared to check my mentions at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Big third down coming up for New Mexico. <laughs> nice, nice segue, pal. <laughs> Get down. away from that question. Third down at 11. You ever seen twins with Danny DeVito? <laughs> that's, that, that's what I was scared of. <laughs> Play action. He's got the release to EOT, finding Owens, slips the tackle from Nutt, but Justin Sweet brings him down. Fourth down coming up here. An interesting decision by yeah. Bob Davey. Ball is at about the 41. I'd be punting the football if I'm him. Yeah, you're out of field goal range, and maybe five yards is too much for fourth down right now. I just think that you try to pin them deep and allow your defense, who's played pretty darn well this evening, Holding this high octane offense to 24 points, you hope they can get you one more stop and you get the ball back in decent field position. I like the call here by Bob Davey. Brendan Fulton was back to return, and now the penalty flag comes flying in. They have an extra guy in there? Looks like maybe there was a count going on between the line judge and Reggie Smith, our lead official. Illegal substitution, offense, breaking the huddle with 12 players. Yep. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. So, it ended up being a penalty because of 12 men in the huddle. Really not much of a problem, though. <sighs> as big a leg as... Yeah, but Hork has his good leg here. Patrick Reed. Yep, so right there on the near side of the field, just came out of the huddle. He's the 12th guy. Easy call for the officials there. Well, Jorquez has been a star tonight so far. And he is a star in special teams again. Excellent execution. As he oh. breaks out of sand. <laughs> no, about that wedge dropping down inside the five yard line. Perfectly placed 45 yarder from the senior out of Bellflower, California. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do too good by contributing to participating universities, general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Bijan Parker cheering on his defense after the right forearm injury has knocked him out of this game. Colorado State pinned deep. And a couple of cushion yards for Izzy Matthews. Remember here in the second half, New Mexico has done a nice job with penetration, playing on the other side of the football. A bit of the danger zone here coming out. Tough road test for Mike Bobo's unit. Third season at the helm of this growing Colorado State program. Took over for Jim McElwain. After McElwain had a 10-win season a few years back, took the job at Florida. Mike Bobo comes from the SEC to take over at Colorado State. Stevens looking for Gallup. That would have been a first down if he could have made that spectacular grab. Third and eight. Nice pressure for a man who's having a well the second half, Kenny Oconquo. Big hit on Stevens as he delivers the pass. Colorado State right near its average on third down, but this is third down and long deep in their own territory. Gallup overthrown. And Stevens has to pick himself up off the deck once again. Flag in the end. Oh, there is a flag. 
If it's holding, it's a safety. If it's holding on the offense in the end zone, it is a safety. Two points for New Mexico. Holding. Offense number 77. The foul occurred in the field of play and will be penalized half the distance to the goal. Repeat third down. Now, here's something very important to note. It depends on where the holding is initiated. The penalty will be declined. It's fourth down. Okay. If the holding is initiated outside of the end zone, Correct. then it's not a safety. Inside Blackwell. It's going to draw the hole working on the center. I don't know. To me, I mean, is it whenever they engage or is it when the holding starts? Now, the officials will err on the side. Talk to officials about this. They'll err on the side of caution here because you don't want to give up a cheap safety. But I'm with you. I think that should probably be a safety. Well, I mean, the I think contact that's a takedown happens in, at the that's one. That's a takedown in the end zone. The Yes, the cheating play by the center because he's beat <laughs> on the bull rush as he pulls the defensive lineman to him. That all took place in the end zone. Chris Davis will set up New Mexico with excellent field position. That was a good job by Bob Davey to decline the holding penalty. And it's fourth down. The ball's at the one-yard line anyway. And they've set themselves up very positively here. Have the Lobos. And it, and it worked out even better after punting the football there at the 41. Now they're back inside the 40. We got a ball game here in Albuquerque. Final 10 and a half. Here in Albuquerque, a one-score game. Adam, one of the things that's been surprising to me tonight, we came in here expecting to see Michael Gallup put on a show. Went for over 260 a week ago and three touchdowns, and he's an unbelievably talented wide receiver. But him and Nick Stevens have not been on the same page tonight. I got to tell you, I put way more on the quarterback he has been inaccurate, a lot of overthrows, and just doesn't seem like he's on the same page tonight with his number one target, Michael Gallup. After a rough offensive series, excellent field position for McCorley and the Lobos. Ball that ball came out. That ball may have come out loose. It did, and Colorado State comes up with a takeaway. Jacob buys. The redshirt senior comes out with it. Big hit delivered. That ball comes out. See clearly the ball's out. Looked like Elson Bast was in the mix there to try to maybe punch that loose. 42. Great look. And it was Sean Johnson. I think it's 17. 17, Sean, Sean, Johnson, Sean Johnson, who came off the backside. Playing the cornerback, he comes up and runs support. He delivers a shot to McQuarley. <laughs> There's the belt. <laughs> Bai says, I'm the champion tonight. Yeah. That championship belt. First turnover on either side in this game. Nearly five minutes into the fourth. Matthews maneuvering pretty well for a 220 pound bruiser. Seems like the belts or something over on the defensive side is a new way to get guys excited, to get guys motivated. I've seen all kinds of different props the defenses use. I was watching our colleagues, Dave Lamont, Mac Brown, and Julie Stewart Binks do that Marshall Middle Tennessee game. Mm -hmm. and Julie was doing a report on a dog bone for the offensive line for Middle Tennessee. Mike Leach has that over at Washington State. I like it, man. I, I, I think it's I fun, didn't have man. It, but you know what? Incentivize these kids, give them something to get excited about, to go play for. Hey, it's all in good fun, and it helps motivate the players. Let's be honest. I feel like you wish you... I feel like you would have responded really well to, like, the gold chain or something like the Miami team's doing. Yeah, right man. I feel like you would have responded very well to that. What do you mean back then? Can I get one for the booth? <laughs> my gold chain at? I love seeing it, man. I love seeing the fun each weekend it's serious there's a lot of the line for the college football for sure. but at the same time what you said is exactly right it's still about having fun when you make plays it's fun Matthews a couple yards there Barnwell on the stop 
Dusty, you talked about this offense, how explosive it is. Nick Stevens is a career 63% passer. He's been off tonight. That's, that's just not Nick Stevens-like based on what we've seen on tape and what we've seen over his long career. He's been off tonight, especially with the wind at his back. He's overthrown, especially Michael Gallup, several times. I think Dalen Dawkins has had a pretty nice night. A couple of catches as well. Michael Gallup, that's the one that really is a bit of a head scratcher. And again, I don't put nearly as much on the wide receiver as I do the quarterback throwing the football. A lot of errant throws tonight from the fifth-year senior, Nick Stevens. Nice spin by Matthews to set up a makeable third down. Remember Michael Gallup, the leading receiver in the country entering tonight. He was a guy who dealt with a lot of injury. He didn't play a ton of wide receiver in high school. He had a lot of offers coming out of high school, but he didn't qualify initially, so he went to junior college. Ended up suffering a bad ankle injury, limiting him to four games in his second year at JUCO. So that second half of the year, when guys are putting out film in junior college, that's when FBS coaches are scouting. So Michael Gallup was limited severely. So he's still really coming on and learning the receiver position. He's got some raw talent, man. That's a first down catch, his sixth grab of the night. Well, on the biggest down of the evening, if I'm Nick Stevens, that's where I'm headed. I'm going to my bell cow. I'm going to Michael Gallup. It's a simple hitch. I'm going to turn around and say, I'm better than the guy across from me. Strong hands, goes up, works back to the football, and gets enough for a big Colorado State first down. Kind of stretching out over there on the sidelines after he goes over 1,000 yards on the season. The first receiver in the country this year to hit the mark. Ooh, Matthews had some space if he kept going right but still picks up good yardage on first down for a big guy he's a patient runner he is kind of picks his way nice cutback it's back to back years that Izzy Matthews has gone over 100 yards against New Mexico Colorado State creeping on that 200 rushing yards for the game. And their line of demarcation throughout the season, average 198 right on schedule for what they typically do. Lobos load the line to try to stop Matthews. Gets hit by Gurgle at the 35-yard line. Gurgle did not play last week at Fresno, had that knee issue. He's been productive on defense tonight. Another third down. Somebody's got to step up on defense to New Mexico. They need a tackle for loss. They need a big stop to try to force a field goal. Third down and two. Play clock winding down. Colorado State calls their first time out of the half. Huge play, fourth quarter, 5.19 to go. Come on back. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by the exceptionally indulgent Lexus ES. Go ahead, spoil yourself. Turquoise, not just a color, but it's the official gemstone of New Mexico. The word turquoise goes back to the 17th century, derived from the French word turquoise, because it was originally brought to Europe from Turkey. The gallop in motion. Third down and two. On to him. And out of his reach. That throw looked off target from Nick Stevens from the start. High. Gallup did get one hand on it. An eight-man box from New Mexico. Had a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage. I like the play design. They motion Gallup across the formation. He's wide open on a quick out. Michael Gallup was. And once again, Nick Stevens 
with a poor pass to his top target, Michael Gallagher. And now a huge 52-yarder. It'd be a season long to make it a two-score lead for Wyatt Bryant. Little bit of hook right at the end. A season long, and it's a two-score lead for the Rams on the road. Last week, it was a 51-yarder from the redshirt junior from Larkspur, Colorado. This time, when they needed it most, Wyatt Bryan extends the lead for Mike Bobo to two scores. Used to be known as University Stadium. Dream style remodeling a local construction business. Bought the naming rights to this stadium. I, I didn't realize that the name Dream Style was being taken literally on this Friday night. The fans here in Albuquerque can barely contain themselves. <laughs> They're bursting with excitement. It's actually been a heck of a football game. Absolutely, man. They're missing out. And after all that, we've got a game that's come down to a possession, now two. And it's up to Tavaka Tuioti, who has been hit or miss on drives tonight. He's had some three and outs, but when he's been sharp, he's been really sharp. The one big pass play for 47 yards earlier. A quick dry scoring touchdown in the second half. We've not seen much Lamar Jordan in the second half. Oh, it's been mostly 2 EOT. And remember that Bob Davey told Molly McGrath that we would see all three quarterbacks in the second half, but clearly, after what Bob Davey saw on the field, his plans changed. Tuioti keeps smartly for a first down. When we were watching film of Tuioti yesterday, I felt like he wasn't as comfortable pitching going to his left, and he wasn't as comfortable throwing to his left. But that's a really good sign because he can use that speed that you've seen on film on either side of the field. I've been impressed with seeing him live here this evening. His ability to run in the open field, I didn't think he had that much speed. But clearly showing he is a dual threat quarterback who can throw the ball efficiently down the field from within the pocket and also effectively run this triple option for New Mexico. That's the transfer from Utah, Jordan Fogle, former walk on at Utah, and earned a scholarship for the Utes. Now working on his master's degree in adult educational training. He said from day one when he stepped onto campus, he just slid right in. Worked his tail off in practice and has really stepped up and been a big part of this Ram defense. Only 436 to play. New Mexico's down two scores. Need a little urgency here if you're the Lobos. Nice cut by Tuioti and a good block by Patrick Reed as well. You're Seven correct. yards. You're correct, though. Urgency. They got to get, get on the football and go. That's part of the problem with having a redshirt freshman quarterback. He's not as acclimated and comfortable getting the offense up to the line of scrimmage and going fast. Clock's working against you right now. Tuioti chased. Got rid of it. Great pressure from R.J. Gene. Guys, seen his reps go up the last few weeks. 3.49 to go. These next two plays could potentially decide the game if New Mexico can't convert. They extend the drive with a chestnut run. A fresh set of downs to the 46, but we're inside of four minutes to play. Just a subtle jump cut by Chestnut in the hole, evading the defender and picking up enough to move the sticks. Owens hit. 
Jones was in the mix. I don't like the way that they've kind of wasted some clock here on this final drive, just being so conservative with the way they're getting up to the line of scrimmage. Now it seems like they're getting a little faster. Yeah, a little tempo finally. Now two scores. Way to go. Now they're claiming Avery Jordan moved. Ball start. Offense number 72. Five yard penalty. It's second down. Avery Jordan, a senior out of Houston, the younger brother of Los Angeles Clipper DeAndre Jordan. Bob Davey will use a timeout, his second with 2.50 to play. We got a chance to visit with Bob Davey over the course of the day yesterday, and like we like to do on these Friday nights, Molly McGrath goes 40 yards. Biggest influence on your career? My wife, married Thank 39 you. years. I've been around some great head coaches, but she uh, told me, take this seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. I love that. Uh, favorite non-football activity? Boy, it would have to be being around my family and my new grandchild. My grandson, Bo, one year old, that would have to be it. Biggest thing you learned in your time as a broadcaster? Get out of that stadium quick before all the traffic mounts out so you can get back to that airplane and get home. We know that all too well. And a favorite kind of taco? Simple. I'm a simple man. I don't like a whole lot of stuff on it. Just give me the uh, tortilla, a little chicken, a little cheese and lettuce, and I'm good to go. Adam and Dusty know a lot about that, and that was 40 yards with Bob Davey. <laughs> we do know a little about that. Second down pass, incomplete. Trying to find Aaron Molina, third and 15 with 2.47 to play. When it comes to food, if you're looking for answers, <laughs> we got you covered up here, baby. Albuquerque took good care of us. And Bob keeps it simple. We, we're, we're, ch we're green chili guys and, and gals. Really, we knocked out some of the green chili yesterday. I had some of the red today. Really enjoyed the time we've had here in Albuquerque. Some great places to eat. Great weather. Been beautiful here. The frontier we stopped at. I think it's a staple of Albuquerque. Yep. The last call, a little hole in the wall taco shop. Mm. A little Sadie's. You never know. Here in Albuquerque. It's not too late yet. Well, Bob did say we have to beat the traffic, although I think some of the folks might be napping, so we might be able to beat them out. And this is tough to see. This has been a night of attrition for both Man. of these teams. Sean Johnson now has to be helped off. I don't remember seeing this many people go down and have to be helped off the field. It's going to be a busy, busy day in the New Mexico and Colorado State training room tomorrow. You know, this, this might actually be a, a night where it's a luxury to play on Friday night for these two teams. Another extra luxury because that'll be an extra day to get healthy. This has been a physical game tonight. And just kind of landing awkwardly at that bottom part of the leg underneath the body. Hate to see that. This is a guy who's played 40 games, a lot of miles. New Mexico defense trying to stay warm next to Bijan Parker, who is out of this game with that right forearm injury. We saw Max McDonald leave this game. We saw Darnell Thompson at one point leave this game. Third down and 15. To EOT, incomplete, looking for Delane Hart Johnson. Tuioti under pressure as he tries to deliver the pass. I think the pressure got there and made him rush that throw and let loose before he wanted to. Overthrows his target by a couple of yards. Last chance right here on yep. a fourth and long for New Mexico. Play clock down to 10. Tuioti trying to get everybody up to the line. He was behind the line of scrimmage when he released it, and he found his man, Q Drennan, for the first down. 
And New Mexico still alive with two and a half to play. Tuioti outside the pocket. There's a laser to extend this drive. Tuioti lost the football. A flag is thrown as well. The Rams recover it initially. We'll have to check a couple of things on this play. Darnell Thompson may have gotten in there with mm. the face mask, so that would negate the fumble. If it is a face mask penalty, though. By the look of Darnell Thompson, I think he knew he had done wrong. Personal foul, face mask. Defense number 91. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. They said 91. That would be Jacob Buys, but this was clearly 94, Darnell Thompson. Big again, defense. That, that ball did come out, but again, the penalty negates it. Tuioti just crunched. This time, Jacob Buys. New Mexico calls their final timeout of the game. It will be a 60 second timeout. But now, New Mexico out of timeouts with second down and long coming up. Jacob Byers is working on the guard. Good hands, flip to hips, picks up a big sack. Set up second long. And the fumble recovery for Colorado State. He just had a championship belt on. That's right. He's got another sack to go along with. Him. Second half for him. Well, let's find out what you're made of, Penn State. You're number two in the country. But a lot of people are saying you haven't been tested yet. Well, you know what? Here's a test. Harbaugh and the boys and that Don Brown defense coming into Happy Valley. 19th ranked Michigan, second ranked Penn State, 730 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. 15 straight regular season wins for Penn State. We're about to find out these next three weeks just how legit the Nittany Lions are. Michigan at home tomorrow at Ohio State, then at Michigan State for a really tough character building three game stretch. To EOT, that's a forward dive, so it depends on where the knee went down. And I think the initial spot is about a half yard shy. But either way, that's good yardage to pick up for Tui OT. Nothing down the field. The rush was closing in on him. He's going to throw the fade to the end zone, and Reed couldn't hang on, but a flag is thrown. Anthony Hawkins had the coverage. A lot of contact outside. Anthony Hawkins pushing and shoving. Pass the jockey. Defense, defense number 14. Fifth yard penalty. Automatic foul. Anthony Hawkins. See him use the right arm. Pull down the receiver's arm. It's a good call by the official. Definitely pass interference. Sets New Mexico up in prime position inside the five. They've been letting these wide receivers and cornerback get pretty physical in play, but too much contact there with the ball in the air. So here we go. Minute 49 left. Now it comes down to two scores, and in between you need an onside kick. First and goal. To EOT. Finds a man in Chris Davis. Muscles to the end zone. We have to check the penalty flag thrown at the four yard line. You gotta appreciate the effort by Chris Davis. Yeah. The five foot seven senior would not be denied. As he fights for the end zone, but unfortunately, I think this is coming back. Personal foul, chop block, offense number six. 
seven and another lineman. 15 yard penalty, repeat first down. High low combo block against an engaged defensive player. That's a chop block. So now you got to go back 15 yards. Charlie Grammel and I thought maybe Blaze Fountain the center to look like. If an offensive lineman is engaged on a block no other blocker can come in and contact the defender below the knees. Under pressure again. Back foot throw looking for Owens. And a penalty marker may have been thrown, and it was. That was a linebacker in Patrick Elsenbast in coverage. And he's going to claim that the pass was uncatchable. Pass interference. Defense. Ball will be placed at the spot. Foul. Automatic first down. That's 18 combined penalties in this game. That was an easy call for the official. Elson Bass all over the wide receiver, grabbing while the ball was in the air. Even if you don't want to call it pass interference, you could have easily called the defensive, defensive holding. holding. Yeah. It was going to be one or the other. <laughs> CSU timeout. Colorado State. Calls her second timeout of the half. Final 95 ticks of this one before we get you ready for a big Saturday. You're going to need some help tomorrow. ESPN app will be your best buddy tomorrow, I promise you. You can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live. You got Oak State going on the road at Texas, a touchdown favorite. You got Michigan State, Indiana. I'm curious about this one. Let's see what the kids in Bloomington do this week after pretty impressive performance against Michigan last week, a loss in overtime. Tough. Should we get a bunch of these people here in Albuquerque, the ESPN app? They wouldn't be sleeping if they had the app. Wake I think, up. I, I think that, yeah, there you go. At least, at least this guy's having a good time. By the way, how many people are you up, or do you think are up right now watching, really intrigued by what happens with this score? Yes, very much so. A lot of folks find this intriguing. By the way, it was about a one-score game. It was a one-score game. Out west, says the people. In the know. In the know. And we're sitting here at a 10-point game. So whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, that could have a pretty big impact for people who are into that kind of thing. By the way, I'd be curious when you go for just a field goal right now. You got a minute 35 left. Now Fourth down. You yeah. want to score a touchdown. Okay. You're already this deep, right? Yeah. Well, another fade ball. Too much for Q Drennan. But, I mean, you're inside the 10. Like, I mean, you get this you, close. You've gotten this far. Yeah, I feel you got to like try to, no, get, you're right. you gotta try to get your touchdown. And it's not as if the clock is moving or anything right now. You are out exactly. of timeouts if you're Bob Davey. I'm just kind of curious when maybe you start to think about it. I think, I think you're right. It's fourth down. That's right. Because remember, with the leg of your kicker, you got a solid kicker. That's right. You don't have to go nearly as far if you score a touchdown here to be able to tie it up. But potentially, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. But if you were able to get an onside kick, you have to travel clearly less of the field. Lamar Jordan in, snap gets past him. Lamar, can he make some magic happen? Flag thrown to the end zone, incomplete. And now we got to check the flag. That, that play had disaster written all over Oof, it from the onset. The start. From Mexico, man. Almost intercepted. Holding offense number 55. Take the penalty. Pizza. So Aaron Jenkins got tagged with it. 32nd career start tonight for Jenkins. And just like that, Lamar Jordan frustratedly goes back to the bench. We asked about this quarterback situation, how all these guys are handling it. This is a three year captain and Lamar Jordan. And they, from what we were told by Bob Davey, he's extremely mature, he's handling it well. He's actually been Tavaka's 
biggest coach and biggest cheerleader in the locker room. Tavaka's in there. Another penalty marker thrown. Incomplete. Got to check the marker at the 18-yard line. Aaron Molina, the intended target. Personal foul, tripping, offense number three. 15 yard penalty, repeat second down. Rock McCorley. This is, by the way, a penalty that in the rule book was emphasized the last two years. You're really trying to cut down on, on tripping. So they're making sure to keep an extra eye on it. Now, as you're getting further and further away, now do you think about maybe at some point in the next two plays, maybe thinking about getting the field goal and then just resetting for the onside? I think you're right. When you're inside the 10, you just gotta, you gotta get the touchdown, but this Things field, change yeah. now that you've gone from the six to yeah. the 31. Yeah. <laughs> They're headed the wrong way, Adam. Sanders is ready to go. To EOT under pressure. And to EOT. Near the 15-yard line. That could have been dangerous, too. The last thing you need if you're an offense trying to get back in it is to take a sack. The clock continues to move inside of a minute. Third down and goal to go. To EOT. Complete. But now the clock continues to move. It's fourth and goal. Got to kick the field goal, right? You got to kick the field goal. Well, you get this, a one score game. Well, this is what hurts you because you can't spike the football now. You have to go to the end zone. To EOT. To the end zone. And Aaron Molina comes down with it. But there's a penalty flag in the end zone. Boy, this is like Chiefs Raiders last night. <laughs> wow. There are two flags on this play. One in the end zone, and I think one around the five. And what a catch by Molina. Quickle substitution, 12 men on defense. The penalty is declined. Result of the play, touchdown. That's just the second career grab for Aaron Molina. And it's a touchdown. Tavaka Tuiu, Tuiatu just throws it up, throws the fade, puts it up high, and allows his receiver to go up. Great adjustment to the football. And New Mexico, a field goal away from tying this game with 24 seconds to play. You didn't think we were going to finish out the night before you get to Saturday for college football and game day out in Happy Valley without a little weirdness, did you? Come on. I would have thought for sure you kicked the field goal. I know what you're saying, that it takes a while to get everybody out there on the field. No, and, and again, you know what? It's more philosophical at that point than anything. And I totally agree with you. Right. When you're inside the 10, you got to go. It just makes the decision a little tougher sure. as you get further and further away. And now we know what it's about. It's onside kick for New Mexico. They need to convert. Colorado State recovers. They're going to go to 4-0 and in conference play for the first time in 15 years, and they'll be bowl eligible for a fifth straight year. Are you ever on hands team for onside kicks? Unfortunately, no. I wasn't sure if uh, I had some soft hands. wasn't sure, wasn't the, sure if uh, they were they were throwing big Dusty to Voracek out on the hands unit. The hands of a wide receiver and the body of a fat, ugly off the defensive <laughs> line. It's a bad combination, Adam. That <laughs> doesn't get you on the hands team. Well, let's see here. Typically, hands teams have a couple of receivers out there, some skill guys out there. Sanders is a very good kicker. Put a little velocity on it. Loose ball, and New Mexico may have it. And that is low ball football with 24 seconds to go and no timeouts down by three and it is tearing Mike Bobo up inside right now and my guy Dalton Fackrell the guy who has great hands great hands Jalen Burrell the corner came up with it 
22 seconds. But Dalton Fackrell just could not corral it cleanly. This is a good kick with velocity on it. A lot of velocity comes in hot. Fackrell can't hold it, bounces off his chest. And New Mexico is in business. And remember, Jason Sanders' career long is 53. So if you get to about the 36, 35 yard line, which is about 18 yards away, you're in field goal range. But remember, no timeouts for New Mexico. Cannot take a sack if you're Tuioti. And he's got to get out of bounds. And he did with 14 seconds to go. Pushed out by RJG. Good play by Tavaka Toyoti. Gets outside the pocket. Man, that rush was getting there at him. And you just felt like the last thing you could do is take a sack in that situation. He's able to evade the rush and get out of bounds to stop the clock. Cannot throw this pass inbounds short of the sticks and you cannot take a sack in this spot. To EOT, nearly picked up by Nutt. Nine seconds to go, third down. And as Dusty pointed out, this has to be past the sticks and the benefit of getting to the sideline is great if you're a team in this situation right now offensively. Boy, he looks gassed, doesn't he, right now? Just kind of breathing heavy with all the pressure he's been under, the defense starting to feel it. It says a pass rusher, or you're pinning your ears back, you're getting off on that football, and you're doing whatever you can to get pressure on the quarterback. To EOT, sideline. It is going to be ruled incomplete by one official. The field judge says incomplete. And now it's fourth down. This is out of field goal range for Jason Sanders, so it might be Hail Mary or hook and ladder territory. Take a look. Bounced in there, feels like, right? A little tough to tell, but I thought it bounced in there. That's probably a good thing, frankly. The ruling on the field of an incomplete pass is under further review. You know what? This would actually be bad if it's a completion for New Mexico because there's only three seconds on the clock. That's just at the edge of getting to the line to spike the football. And this would be borderline at this point. Uh... But with the stoppage, when they spot the football, yeah, they do. They would. It would the, be a first the, down. New so Mexico is going to be able to get over the ball. It doesn't take three seconds to snap and spike it. So, yeah, if this and, and is and a completion, yes, they're in field goal range. They are right on the cusp, range. and they will have time to spike the football. I, I think he caught the football. I looked. To, I mean, by the looks we have, I mean, as you watch, look at his hands get underneath the football. I don't see the ball ever touch the ground. That's tough. So I, I, tough. What I don't know is if there is enough, it, enough evidence, evidence to, overturn, to overturn the call on the field. You know what? You make a great point, too. The spike rule with three seconds only applies when the clock's moving. So this would be a, a, a stopped clock situation. After further review, the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass is confirmed. It's fourth down. Well, it's a moot point anyway. Now it's Matter. fourth down. I take a shot at the end zone. Yeah, I, that's all you can do now, uh, unless you want to try for a short pass and try to flip it around and hope you can make it. This seems like Hail Mary territory now. I feel like the Hail Mary plays, not that they have a great uh, rate of return, but I feel like it's higher than the hook and ladders. I'm with you on that. You got Chris Davis out there. You got Delane Hart Johnson on the near side of the field in the slot. Comes down to this with three seconds left. Under pressure, Tui OT brought down by Evan Colorado. The birthday boy closes it out. And Mike Bobo escapes Albuquerque 
with a road win and bowl eligibility and a 4-0 Mountain West record. Colorado's going to enjoy this birthday quite a bit. The game clinching sack. Colorado State moves to 4-0 in Mountain West play. And their hopes of a conference championship for the first time since 2 alive and well. Evan Colorado, the one who knocks to close out the game. Colorado State comes away with a 27-24 win. Jalen and Jacoby, my guys, they're coming up next here on ESPN2, Sports Center over on ESPN. For Dusty Dvorak, Molly McGrath, our great crew in Albuquerque, Adam Amin saying so long. Enjoy game day, 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN.